Good evening, Mission Control. Well, just got done with a long day at the normal job, and tonight we get to uh, catch up with some stuff around here. So let me tell you what I've been up to. Well, yesterday was a really tough day for me. I uh, spent all day Saturday and Sunday installing the new uh, valves here. This is the inlet valve for filling the grow bed, and then underneath the tank, I actually have the outlet valve. Now, this valve here is normally closed, uh, meaning that unless electricity is sent to it, it will remain closed. So if power goes out, this thing closes. And then the uh, valve on the bottom, which is right underneath here, it's a normally open, meaning that if the power goes out, that valve opens. Now the reason for that, uh, let's see here, I'm gonna back up. Uh, in previous video, I gave you my thoughts on the uh, Bell siphon valves. Those are the uh, the valve systems that we used originally. Uh, you can see the one here in the middle of this tank. And the idea with Bell siphons is that the water fills up and then it gets to the top of a standpipe inside, which is surrounded by another tube. And uh, the water goes over the standpipe, goes straight to, through the drain, and then that action sucks the air down and creates a siphon, draining the bed very quickly and uh, keeping from having standing water in the bed. Now I spent a lot of time troubleshooting that bell, bell siphon and trying to get it really dialed in and finally decided that it's just not for a commercial level act, activity like what we're trying to do. It's really just not worth your time. Uh, second to the time issue is that the bell siphons required manual changing of the height, you'd, meaning you'd have to come out here and you'd actually have to change the height of the standpipe now that's important because not all your plants need the same amount of water. So if you were to constantly be bringing water all the way up to the top where the standpipe is at or in here somewhere where the standpipe is at, you would actually be flooding some of your plants. And what we learned is that if you bring the water up that high, the plant never shoves its roots down into the ground, thus creating a situation where the plant becomes top heavy and it falls over. So you need to be able to have a system that when you first put your plants in, your seedlings in, the water level comes up to meet those roots. But then over time, that water level drops commensurate with the maturation of the plant. So as the plant gets bigger, the water level drops so that the roots go down and really establish itself uh, in the bed. So what we wanted to do is make a way that we can do that without actually having to be here because part of our system is all about automation, right? We, we want this to be able to be done in such a way that a normal family of four has got to take the kids to the football practice, soccer practice, basketball, go out on dates, do have a, a normal life, won't have to come out here and be popping off PVC valves in order to update your media bed. And media bed was chosen because we want to do more than just have um, short statured plants you know we want to get the tomatoes we want to kiwis we want to do some fun things you know that require an actual medium to hold it to give it to give it vertical structure so um enter oh and we had previous valves i don't have any close to me here um previous valves that were on these were pretty cheap ten dollar twelve dollar valves off of amazon um, these valves, they run about uh, 40 to $60 a piece. Uh, they're made of stainless steel, uh, very heavy duty. The reason we went with these valves is because we needed something reliable. And the uh, smaller valves, um, they, did, they were not reliable. They were gunking up, plugging up, they were failing. Um, these are industrial level valves, uh, a lot more robust, a lot better built, so we went with them. Well, so I came out here, I got this all set up on Saturday, and I came out here on Sunday, actually, I was out cleaning the stalls, and Mrs. Martian came out here, was doing her checks, and we had water all the way up at the top. And so I came out here and quickly disconnected the power, everything drained, and I started freaking out. I had a total, complete freak out. Uh, definitely not not appropriate for YouTube type of freak out and I was like god what in the world have I done wrong here that doesn't even make sense if I pulled power why and and they worked what 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 is going on how come we were having an overflow 
we weren't just having an overflow in one bed, but we had an overflow in two to three beds simultaneously. That's not even supposed to be physically possible because I have a relay that controls each one, and if it goes from one, it turns the power off on that one, and it turns the power on the next one, meaning it should always empty. That was the logic used in this, and I didn't have standpipes put in this yet for overflow conditions. Stupid. But my logic at the time is like these, these are normally open valves, and if the power, when it switches, that's going to open the valve, meaning I could end up with a situ, uh, I shouldn't ever end up with a situation like what I had, but there it was staring right at me. Uh, and a long story short, shorter, uh, it took me all day Sunday of coming out here and watching the valves. At, at first, it looked like it was a memory leak in the Arduinos because the code was working perfectly. Um, I troubleshot that code and tested that code over the course of days to make sure it was working right. Had everything's tested out on that. That code works, but for some reason something wonky was going on. So I thought, well, maybe I'm getting into a, a, an, a, a memory overflow condition uh, on the boards, and that's the best thing I could think of. So I, I looked that all up, and on the board that I have, it has a thing, and, and for, for those that know this, uh, forgive me, I'm gonna make this really simple for those that don't, but, because I didn't know this. Uh, when you have a, a processor, uh, which is what these little Arduinos are, they're just little computer processors, and you have a process that's going on those, there's another little processor that's called a watchdog, and that watchdog, it, it watches. It watches the main processor. And the main processor has to tickle. A little tickle, a little scratch on the belly there, the watchdog. So the watchdog goes, ooh, you're still working. And then the processor keeps on going. But if the, the processor doesn't tickle the watchdog, the watchdog get angry. Arr, arr, no one talking to, no one tickled the watchdog. What's going on? And eventually what it does is says, all right, Mr. Processor, you haven't tickled me. You haven't given me any attention, so I'm going to reset you. Boom, reset, and it restarts the computer. Just like if you get go home, Windows crashes, not that that would ever happen, and you hit the restart button and everything works again. So that watchdog wasn't explicitly called out in my code, so I explicitly called it out to make sure it was fully active, and then I added a one millisecond delay to make sure that the watchdog got tickled. Now, if that didn't make any sense to you, don't worry about it. All it meant was I added two lines of code and uh, to code that I've already tested to try to make sure that the memory overflow wasn't the problem. And on lanes two, three, and four, after I made those changes, worked great, worked great. I was out here all day long. I think I did six, seven checks total uh, throughout the course of the entire day and not one problem, all good. Now the good news is I wrote the code such that if a reset occurs, meaning the watchdog trips and it resets the computer, the code can handle a reset. That was one of the major troubleshooting errors I had a long time ago that I've since fixed. So any reset on the computer um, by a watchdog or any other event like a power outage, the valves, will, the power will go out, the valves will open, the beds will empty, and as soon as the power comes back and it restarts, um, it'll pick up right where it's left off. So that was good, and I've tested the heck out of that. So then we're over here on lane one, which is this lane right here, and what was, I still couldn't figure it out, because why was lane two, three, and four working? Why were lanes two, three, and four working? But lane one wasn't working. So I kept troubleshooting, and I thought maybe I had some bad valves, but no, I tested all the valves, they all worked, everything was good there, so what could it be? Well, uh, we just passed the 8 o'clock hour here, so the lights actually turned off on the bed, proving that the code and everything is working correctly over here. So I actually plugged my laptop in uh, to the master control unit here, and I was doing what's called serial logging. I was just watching everything that this device was pumping out, trying to figure out what the heck is going on, why wasn't it working? And then I got the voltmeter out and I tested across the relays that are in here. So let's open this nice and carefully. Uh, these relays right here, there was actually a voltage 
draw across them even when they weren't powered. And uh, so I thought, well, maybe it's broke. <laughs> maybe, maybe I burned it out somehow. But then I did a power cycle on the entire lane, meaning I killed all power to it and turned it back on and the relays worked fine. And they worked fine for multiple hours and then I came out here and did one of my checks and it went into this funky state again where it had a voltage draw across all of them or voltage difference, excuse me, across all of them and that didn't make any sense. So I kept digging, kept digging, kept digging, kept digging. It was a faulty ground wire created by a faulty connection created by some piss poor soldering by yours truly on the custom board that's in here that's just essentially a, uh, a distribution board. It's a very simple board but I did something wrong and I used not the best connectors. I, I use standard connectors for kits like this like what you do. I mean they're all bought. It's just it was loose. A loose wire. A few loose wires I think is what it was. So anyway Got them all set up again, made sure they're all nice and tight in there, and sure enough, everything's been working great since. It looks so much cooler in here when the lights are on, but here's what we're gonna do tonight. We, we're, we're gonna experiment with uh, a drain solution here. I'm gonna use the same location of the bell siphon. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and drill us a one inch hole, and then we're gonna put some PVC through with a rubber gasket on the top side of this. I'm gonna go like this, the rubber gasket in there. This will pinch down on the inside of the bed. I'm gonna put that through the hole we're gonna drill. And then I'm gonna take this and set it down through the hole, come up from the bottom with this and tighten it. And then there's the, uh, if everything works correctly, that will be the distance that uh, will tighten this thing up nice and snug, pulling that gasket down onto the uh, plastic that's in the pond liner. And we'll simply put a uh, thread to slip adapter on there and put a half inch PVC into it. And all this, we're gonna, again, take the drill bit down drill it and uh, see what we can do. But that'll give us a nice overflow drain uh, such that it should never come to a point where it um, comes over the top again. I only bought one of these tonight just to test it, uh, see how it all does. And then if it works the way that I'm hoping it does, then uh, I'll buy the rest of these tomorrow at the hardware store and we'll get it installed everywhere. Now, if it doesn't work, I'm gonna turn off the valve and uh, to this bed, and that'll be it. So, oh, another thing I learned last night is that my code on the server uh, for controlling all these, right now it doesn't have a way to actually tell it um, how long to run and thus the height that needs to, uh, it needs to get up to. So I need to make those updates on the uh, server side of things too. I need to create the HTML page that controls it. Uh, the field in the database that stores it and I need to update the Arduino code so it goes and grabs it and pulls it back. So I'm not going to do all that tonight. I got lots of things to do so I'm going to get started on this little thing here. Okay so we're going to go ahead and call this project quits for the night. I need to go think on it some more. Uh, I got the drain pipe put in there but when I put it in I set it in real hard and now I can't get it back out and it's not cut to length. I needed it long so I could set it. I'm trying to do all this. I thought I was keeping it as simple as possible if I just use the existing drain location and put in a secondary hole. Uh, but I don't know. I kind of like, I really do like that idea because then I can put the uh, siphon cover over the back, the, over the top of it. And that allows us to create a siphon to really drain everything out. If we do get to an overflow position, you know, it won't just kind of trickle out or you know, come in, go out type of thing, same flow rate and flow rate out. Uh, but the bell siphon will really just empty it. Uh, so I kind of do like that idea, but it's really tight in there. Uh, it's hard to maneuver in there. 
and underneath it's all really tight as well so you can't really get in there and tighten everything as, as best as you can and I also just need a second pair of hands up top here to hold it while I crank it down on the bottom that'll cinch it up real nice tight get that gasket to seal up um, I do have a small little drip down there right now uh, not too bad though it might just be from water getting places when I drilled the hole so we'll keep an eye on it like I said sleep on it tonight um, see how I feel about it tomorrow and uh, if I like it I'll buy the rest of the parts I think the idea is right I think the parts are right uh, it's just getting it all dialed in and installed correctly so uh, there you go uh, on to the next job tonight here but I hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe and don't forget that you can follow us on Facebook Twitter and on patreon in the meantime this is the real Martian out